Thank you. That's pretty good. Guys, pretty make good. my way over here. Pretty Thanks, good. Better man. than Coldplay, oh. at least. God, I just took What's going on, dude? We're going to share a microphone over here. You're watching <laughs> Billboard Live. My name is Kevin Kenny, and they are, of course, yeah, Minus man. the Bear. Now, all three of those songs are off the new record, right? Voids is out. It's everywhere now. Um, and each of those was a track off that album, right? Correct. Right. Cool. So that's your sixth album, I heard. Yeah. Been a band now for about, what, 15, 16 years, and you, you formed in Seattle? Yeah. Right on. Yeah, we're so old I enough to drive. Old enough to drive. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about Seattle really quick because I, I think that with that city, um, you know, the, the grunge scene of maybe 10 years before you guys kind of swallows up that city's history. Um, so I was curious, what was the scene like when you guys came together in the early 2000s in that city? Early 2000s was interesting. There was a lot of activity, a lot of new kind of, it was, it was a moment where a bunch of bands broke up and a bunch of new bands started. Um, some creative cross-pollination was happening for sure. Right. Oh. Well, and the, did that spill sure. over into you guys? Because I knew you guys were, came from a bunch of different bands, right, before forming Minus yeah. the Bear. Yeah, Alex was in Mistletoe. Okay. And um, <laughs> I was in New Mexico when the band formed. I, I, I came up and became the live sound guy and co sort of witnessed all this happening a few years later. But, yeah. Oh, wow. All right. I was in Pillow. Pillow. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> stay Route 522, and he was in... <laughs> And sharks keep moving, and he was in botch. Those are great names. The mighty. So when botch. you're in these bands, you're in these existing bands, and you come together to form a new band. Uh, do you remember what the objective was with Minus the Bear in the beginning? It was like a. It was like a kind of an experiment. Experiment. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget to put the mic in front of his face. Oh yeah, we, we got a show over here. Yeah. yeah. Right here. Teaching my kids how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it started. Uh, go ahead. You were there first. Oh, I mean, I don't. I mean, I think we all came from different musical backgrounds, but I mean, Jake recorded my old band's first seven-inch, which was like a you know, which hardcore like metal band, and I was sick of playing hardcore and metal. And I met Corey in a bar called the Cha Cha Lounge. He was wearing it, an Econochrist <laughs> T-shirt, uh, and then Probably we the we started a band. Uh, and it, I mean, I just wanted to play something that wasn't constricted by like heavy music. Yeah. You know what I mean. So then everyone came together and it kind of just grew from there organically. Corey and, and I had talked about playing together before the band started, and luckily this is the band he was playing in, so it dovetailed nicely into <laughs> well, right now. joining. And now, when you talk about your approach to music, you know this is your sixth record. It's the first in five years, so there's a little bit of a gap there between the last one and this one. Um, I, I've heard th people say that, or maybe you have even, you guys have even said it. it you sort of had a blank slate heading into this record. Was there anything that sort of led to that sort of like reset button as a group, as, as individuals um, heading into the voids? Yeah, I mean, we had um, a, a new drummer to play with. Change. We had new, um, new songwriting process. Happening. Okay. We, yeah, so uh, we fired new, everybody. Fired yeah. everybody. <laughs> rehired hired some new people. Yeah. And uh, so it was, and it had been so long. So, and, and, and during that break, Dave and I had children, not together. That'd be okay. <laughs> and um, and so you know we were concentrating on some of that, and it changes your perspective on life. And does it? Yeah. yeah. So I think when we uh, got back together to, write, I mean we didn't really stop writing, but once we once we solidified the the album stuff, we were kind of. Right. We don't really set out with ex expectations for ourselves when we write a record. We, anyway, right. so. Yeah. We definitely threw out a batch of music. We, we kind of like wrote more than we've ever written for this record. For this record. Yeah. As opposed, yeah. So we had a batch of songs then had a, a lineup shift and then we just we started fresh. Right on. You know, you talk about changing perspective when you become a parent. Obviously, you know, in life, that must just change your perspective 180 degrees. Oh, or, yeah. But in music, how did you, was there ever a moment where along the process, and I don't even know what it would be, but that you kind of saw a change in yourself as musicians by being new parents? Hmm. Uh, I don't know if the music writing changed necessarily, but there was just the BS meter was um, really easy to look at and, you know, I don't know, in terms of like interpersonal relationships and like how everything was happening, like I don't have time to deal with this, so I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to be on the same page as us or me or whatever, then right get on the same page. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Um, I'm a big stickler for titles of albums and voids. I was wondering what the backstory to that, choosing that title for this record, what does voids mean to you guys? Well, 
<laughs> no, he, he was going to start. I saw it. Yeah. He, there was something. I think that pause that you just witnessed, there was sort of a, a vacuum, something to fill. So uh, voids was what there was maybe as we were writing the music and sort of what some of the songs were about, and then we, we filled it with music. So right on. it just seemed, seemed like an appropriate, concise yeah. way to sum up all the change. that sp- span of time. Yeah, like sum up, summing up all the change that had happened within the band and business-wise and, yeah, I mean, just all that stuff. So yeah. it was just, you know, like you said earlier, a blank slate, so there was nothing there. So it seemed like an appropriate way to, you know, label all these songs as one unit. Yeah. So. Now, Sam Bell produced the record, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he's worked with Weezer, I think, in the past, Tour or Cinema Club. I'm always, like, just kind of fascinated by that process of making a record is, how do you go about choosing a producer? How do you go about, like, you know, picking who's going to produce this record? Yeah, that was, that was a weird one because... Um, I happened to meet him through a mutual friend right as we were starting to write the record and I was so excited saying yeah we're multi-tracking the practices and you know I record some stuff so I was like oh cool I can talk to this producer about nerdy things and uh, he didn't care about those at all so um, (laughs) (laughs) that was kind of cool he kind of like was (laughs) speaking of uh, BS meters it was nice to have just a fresh one and his is pretty low as well, so he'll just tell you if something's off or if he doesn't agree with it. Um, it was nice to have that outside perspective, and um, he was English, so it was he's just he's just a funny dude. He's so cool he could really around. cut you down, but you'd be like, yeah. oh, he's so charming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it more of a personality thing, or is it like you know you hear what the records that they've produced before, and I want our stuff to kind of sound more like that, or is it a combination? It's, for me, it felt somewhat more more collaborative, just okay. because. It, I don't know. We, I felt like he was more of a peer in the studio rather than having a producer that lords over people and like kind mm-hmm. of we develop. I think I feel like the band and Sam developed the vision for the record together, mm-hmm. basically as it went down. Yeah. Anything you add? No. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, it's that was one of the most you know inspiring recording sessions I think I've been a part of was doing this new record. It was just awesome. I think you know I think everyone in their own different way melded minds with sam over their instrument or the the project as a whole or whatever and like it once that vision came together it was just like full steam ahead so it was a great feeling now this record we're just a reminder for you all at home this record avoids has been out since i think march 3rd this year it's available on spotify on itunes you can buy you can download you can stream it um and you guys have actually been touring off of it um throughout pretty much the spring right you're kind of winding down now you got a couple more north american dates but how how has tour been it's been really good yeah been uh, awesome crowds, really good, consistent. People seem to know it. At least the people that I can see in yeah. the, the front. It's, it's yeah. that the best it's feeling? The very earliest adoption of new material that I feel like. We yeah, had. It, yeah, you know, we were playing on tour right after the record came. Not too long after the record came out, and right. Yeah, South by right. Center. Yeah. I mean, we, we so we left the tenth to tour and um, of March, and people already knew lyrics, and and that just makes it. Amazing. Right. Yeah. How do you me- measure success of a record? You know, you could go to sales, you could go to like, I know some people, you know, are, if they're saying the words back to you, you did a good that's job. That's almost it. I think that's the measure for me. Right? <laughs> if, yeah. if it feels like it's connecting and people, it's in their totally. Yeah, their I mean, DNA. The, the, the normal or the traditional metrics are difficult to understand these days. Yeah, it's just right. Like it's cloudy the way, like, record sales and, and, right with digital formats and, and singles and how does that and how do you deal with album I don't know it's, it's, it's yeah. not like just selling discs anymore yeah exactly you know? it's gotten uh, mighty complicated yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I said you're kind of wrapping up the North American like you got a couple more dates I think we were talking before we went live Vermont um, Pennsylvania maybe and then also Albany yeah. you're playing a festival up there mm-hmm. uh, but what you're really gearing up to and what's cool about Facebook Live is you know we're international right now all around the world you're actually gearing up for a big uh, European UK uh, leg yeah. Up. Yeah, that starts uh, May 31st in Dublin, and then it's throughout a lot of the UK, and then some parts of Germany and the Netherlands. Yeah, Germany. We got Amsterdam, um, Antwerp, Antwerp. Yeah, Prague for Prague the for first the first time. time. Yeah. yeah. Never played Prague. No. Wow. Um, you know, I asked this question to a couple of bands that have come through that kind of do the you know the international thing, um, and I get a lot of different responses. So I'm curious to get your guys' opinion: is how do the crowds differ, if at all? from over from Europe to uh, the United States 
And there's there's a big difference, I think. I mean, really? but there's a big difference between, I don't there's know, a big difference Kentucky and, and Seattle. But even between like, you know, like playing a show in Germany versus a show in like the UK and Manchester. I mean, a lot of, I mean, I'm sure everyone says this, but sometimes the German crowds are more like, your first song was very good and then the rest was okay. okay. <laughs> or, I really like, I really like your first record. This one's okay you know yeah, i mean yeah, i don't yeah. i mean there's they're a language honest, barrier and yeah. but they're they're very honest and i mean that's nice sometimes but yeah. you know it's, it's just you know yeah each region has their own sort of vibe yeah yeah um now you guys are coming back to the states i guess in the in the fall you're gonna play riot fest and uh, you're something this is not your first riot fest no we did the denver one a couple years ago and chicago a couple years before that so this will be you know third time playing a riot fest yeah, you guys like the festival like kind of deal. Yeah, as opposed to like your own show. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little lukewarm. They're just different shows. beasts. I, it's yeah, just, our own shows are are, are more fun for me. I, it, it's just a to- It is a totally different. Experience. Yeah, it's like your yeah. club. It's like your friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they're I mean, there. I mean, the festivals are just like challenge. Yeah. Win the win the crowd over yeah. and yeah. And stuff. Yeah, definitely. Well, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. A quick reminder that everything we just talked about, you can buy tickets to it um, at minusthebear.com, I believe, is probably the best place to Correct. buy tickets. Um, best of luck with tour, um, and thanks for stopping by, guys. No thanks for having us. Yes. Cheers. See you guys.